part of it. Well, that's good. Now, did you have any? I, I use a spot, one of the spot trackers, which you've probably heard of. I don't know if you've yeah. used anything like that on your trips or not. I did. Okay. My ex, my ex get, let me borrow his, and the, the funny thing was, I didn't really know how to use <laughs> use it. And uh, but it was leaving breadcrumbs fine. But one thing is, um, something something was left on, and he wasn't able to contact me, and there was no cell phone reception. So. A ranger paid a visit to me in the morning and my first night of Joshua Tree and said, you have people looking for you. So, uh, you're uh, I'll, I'll bet it was in tracking mode and it was still signaling. It was. And, and, and in the same it spot was. because at that point people think that you, you must have laid the bike down because uh, the tracker is not moving. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> it, it's a good tool, though, and you know, um, I recommend it both for, for people uh, that, are, that are traveling and, and people want to follow them. And yeah. at the same time, if you're riding alone, because uh, I do that a lot myself, sometimes out in remote areas, it's just nice to have that so you can be found if need be, heaven forbid, but uh, just in case it happens. So. I think it's a must to have a spot satellite yep. tracker or a sat phone, something to stay in communication at all times. Yeah, up in Labrador, I, I did ta- we did take a sat phone with us up there, but uh, normally I just have my regular cell and... Uh, you know, most places, if you can get to a town, you can use, like, a calling card or something, uh, right. phone phone card to use a, a regular phone in, in a store or something. And I now, take my my laptop as well, and so I can Skype my little kids. Yeah, I got the road. same thing on mine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good tool. <laughs> it is. Now, this trip itself, how many days and what was the total mileage that you covered? I went for a week-long trip, and what was so funny is uh, I blew the uh, – the tripometer on the way, and I pressed the wrong button, and it got reset. So I didn't get the total miles, but I am guessing it was around 1,300 to 1,500. Okay, it's a good trip. Yeah. Now, there, there were several milestones on this first trip, um, and what, I, what I'd like to do now is just kind of um, pass by some of these milestones and just have us have you share a few things about your thoughts yeah. of what the highlights were. The first one, uh, which I've never been to, Joshua Tree National Park. Oh, I tell you, I just, I've been to Joshua Tree before, only camping, though, and uh, taking a car in there. But going this time on my bike was such a treat. It is such a beautiful spot in, in California. I stayed at Indian Cove Campground, and these gorgeous round rock spires and rock faces. It's a huge place for, for rock climbers. And since I went on a Sunday, it was pretty much cleared out, for, except for a few diehard climbers. So I pretty much had the place to myself, and it happened. It was in October, and it was a, a warm October, so it was perfect weather. I'll never forget after you know setting up camp and eating a quick meal and just setting out to explore the area. And I stayed out into the night and found a nice little rock perch and sat there and watched the stars all night long. It was just incredible and magical. It it was a neat neat night out in uh, Joshua Tree. Uh, for the listeners now, we're talking with Nicole Espinoza. Um, her ride reports and her website, you can find the links on the Side Stand Up uh, website. We've got the links there. Um, in your ride reports, and, and I've, I've looked at a couple of the others, the photography is great, and uh, anybody that I've referred to your reports has always come back and talked about uh, how uh, engaging and entertaining the text was. Do you have any kind of a writing or photography background, or is it just something you just enjoy doing? Well, thanks, Pat. You know, it's funny. The two together are two of my biggest passions. I really love photography as a hobby, and that's kind of (laughs) one of the main reasons I like to go solo is because I take a lot of time and I do take my time stopping, and I don't like slowing anyone else down. Uh, So I just love the photography on, on my jaunts, and then I love writing about it as well. I mean, I've had... I've kept journals my whole life, and now these ride reports are kind of a culmination of my photography and my writing. It's like a living journal for me, and when I go back putting putting them together, it's like reliving the trip, and I just have a ball doing it. So it thrills me that other people are kind of along for the ride and are enjoying it as much as I enjoyed writing them. Uh, believe me, there's a lot of people that enjoy your reports. Thank you. <laughs> I've talked that. to several of them. Thank um, you. Your, your next milestone was over to Sedona, Arizona, and many years ago, uh, actually as part of the United States military, I was in Arizona, spent some time in Arizona, and I was up to Sedona and Grand Canyon and stuff. So what were your uh, highlights in, at Sedona? Well, I tell you, it, it was actually Sedona that I was first drawn to for this entire trip, and then it uh, branched out from there. So 
I was actually drawn to it for, of course, its beauty and the rich red rocks and formations out there. Uh, nothing like we have here in California. So I knew it was a destination spot for me. And I knew this would be a perfect spot for kind of this magical trip of mine, the first one. I, uh, and I had also heard about these energy vortexes out there, and I kind of wanted to take a look for myself and see if I felt anything, which I didn't. I was just in awe of the beauty around me. And uh, I ended up, I was really glad I spent two days there and had a neat little campground in the canyon and went for a nice hike at, uh, at Cathedral uh, Rock the next day. And it was nice to stretch my legs after being in the saddle for so long. So. Yeah, you did. I, I noticed you did some hiking in there. The, the, the beauty of the red rocks and the, and, the, and the formations there is just it's something that if you haven't been, you can't describe it. Best way to describe it is go look at your ride report. <laughs> oh, that's great. I know. It is a must-see. And that's what I mean about these trips and being an adventure rider is – you know, oftentimes you don't get to see some of these things uh, through the years of your life, and it's a great excuse to get out on your bike and just go. Yeah. Now, Grand Canyon came along, and uh, I've been there, and uh, I, I I can't describe that in words. Uh, I've got some great photographs myself, sunset photos, and the whole nine yards uh, of the canyon. Uh, what did you experience there? You know, it was Pat, I really wasn't even ready for my reaction to the Grand Canyon. I knew... I knew it would be gorgeous and spiritual, and but I ended up just being dumbfounded when I first saw yeah. it. And it was yeah. so expansive. Uh, there were other people around me, so I tried to get as far away from them as possible so I could just listen to this just expansive and grandiose silence that just surrounded me. And I spent the whole day there, and I could have spent a lot more time, but just... Uh, it's very profound to be there. I mean, I ended up, you know, finding answers to some big questions and then digging in deeper to, you know, find purpose and look at the direction that I was going in my life. And it was just, it was a miraculous moment for me. It really was. That was That's one of those places, it's, it's almost impossible to do it all in a day. <laughs> yeah, it really was. So it just whet my appetite for future trips, let me tell you. <laughs> 